Hi everyone, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to another video. Today I want to share with you some ink trapping with Cracker Box and Suzy Stamps. This is not a new technique. It's not my own technique, but it's a fun one and I wanted to share it here on this channel. So I'm starting off with Cracker Box and Suzy Stamps, the flower swirl stamps. And I'm also starting off with an A2 size cardstock panel. This is white cardstock. Now, the thing with this is you are going to be doing a lot of embossing on this. So I am going to keep my little embossing bag handy right off to the side and prep my surface each time before I stamp. So I gave it a good dusting and now I'm going to start stamping my flower swirl stamps. I'm using Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky ink to put down my images. This is a clear ink. Like I said, it's gonna be a little hard to see. And I want to stamp these in a way that they're not super close together. There aren't a ton of these on the paper. You want a lot of white space left over right now because we're going to add more layers on top of this. So I'll stamp about two of the larger ones and one of the smaller one. And then once that is good, I'm going to go ahead and cover up those stamped images with some clear embossing powder. You could use white here if you wanted to. However, I'm just going to use clear because my paper is white and it's all going to end up kind of the same. Once I have that heat set with my heat tool, it's time to start ink blending over the top of that heat embossing. Now, heat embossing is a slick surface and it's a non-porous surface, so it's going to resist all of that ink that's put on top of it. For this layer, I'm starting off with a very light pink ink. I'm using It's a Girl from Katherine Pooler, and I'm using my Amazon blending brushes to just get that ink on. All I want to do is get a nice even layer of it covering the entire panel. You could also use a makeup sponge for this or an ink dauber, but I'm just going to go ahead and use my blending brush for a nice soft look. Now, I gave this a good little dry with my heat tool to make sure the ink was nice and dry. You don't want to remelt that embossing powder, but just hold it back and give it a good dry to make sure that that ink is set. Then give it a really good dusting with your embossing bag. Then it's time to start stamping over the top of this ink. Again, going in with that Versamark ink, which is a nice clear sticky ink that's going to hold on to that embossing powder whenever you put it over the top. Now here I'm just going to fill in all of those little spaces with my different flower swirl stamps. So I'm stamping the larger one a couple of times and then I'll stamp my smaller flower swirl stamp as well just to fill in those areas. There are still going to be some white space areas and that's okay because we'll add one more layer after this is done. Once I have all of those stamps on the paper and I'm happy with it, I'm going to add another layer of clear embossing powder over those stamped images. You do want to be careful here because you have some ink underneath this now. So if you get any little pieces stuck where you don't want them, just use a dry paintbrush and brush those away before you heat emboss. Whenever you emboss this and you heat set that embossing powder, anything underneath it is now trapped. And that's great for this technique because now we have this gorgeous paper with a white flower and then we have a light pink flower. And now we're going to put one more layer of ink over the top of this. This is going to trap all of that light pink in that embossing. It's going to highlight that. So for this layer, I am using slightly darker than what I used before, and that is Party Dress from Katherine Pooler. You could step it up and go with a really dark, dark red if you wanted to. That would be gorgeous. But I'm using a nice dark pink and doing a little bit of an ombre situation here. Now, once I have all of that ink on top, it sometimes gets a little built up on top of my heat embossing. So I just like to take a cloth and give those areas a good wipe down to remove any excess ink that's sitting on top of the embossing powder. Now we're going to do one last layer of heat embossing. I'm still using Versamark ink and I'm still stamping onto my paper. Now I gave this a really good dusting again with my embossing bag. And this time, instead of avoiding all those areas that I stamped on previously, I'm going to overlap a few of these areas with my stamped images. Once I'm happy with my images that I've stamped down, I'm going to come in and add a darker, it's more of a maroony color, 
but it's a nice pearl and it kind of goes with the color theme here. Now you could completely skip this step or you could do just another one of your steps where you heat emboss with clear and then do ink blending over the top. But I decided to go with a nice dark pink embossing powder over the top of all of this. And that is going to finish off that gorgeous ombre look. Now the last thing you want to do is get rid of all that excess powder that you've been putting onto your paper. I just use a dry paintbrush for that. And once it is finished, I have this gorgeous background ready to go on my card. Now I wanted this to kind of be the star of the show here. So all I did was add this fun sentiment from Cracker Box and Susie Stamps on top of that panel. I stamped it with just plain black ink and then added the panel onto an A2 side folding card base that I'm using horizontally. Super simple. You're putting quite a bit of work into that background so everything else on the card I like to keep nice and simple. Now for my second card I'm going to actually use a glitter embossing powder. Now this is going to turn out a little bit different because it's not as non-porous as just a regular clear embossing powder. The glitter flakes allow for a little bit of ink to seep through. So this isn't going to give you as clean of a result. It's going to be more distressed. I'm starting off exactly the same way. Prep my surface with my embossing bag. Stamp down my image. I'm using the Chrysanthemum Solid Stamp from Cracker Box and Susie Stamps. And then I'll go ahead and put on my embossing powder. This is the iridescent clear embossing powder from Imagine. This is a clear embossing powder with an iridescent glitter in it. That's all it is. Once I have that down, I'm going to go ahead and heat set. Now heat setting glitter embossing powders can be a little bit difficult. I do have a uh, video that shares how I like to do it and I will leave that linked in the top right hand corner. But essentially, it's best to come from underneath the paper and heat set that glitter embossing powder. Once I have that heat set, I'm going to ink blend over the top of that with my lighter ink. For this, I'm using dried marigold, which is a distress ink, and I'm using my mini ink blending tool to just get that on the paper, making sure that I take care to go around all those heat embossed areas so they're nice and highlighted. Now I prep my surface again, made sure that ink was nice and dry, went over it with my embossing bag, and then I can do some more stamping on top of this. Again, using that Versamark ink and just trapping that ink underneath. Once I have all these images stamped down, I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle on some of that more iridescent glitter embossing powder. This layer is always going to take a little bit longer because even if you dust it really, really well, you still will get some areas where that embossing powder just wants to hang on. Use a dry paintbrush and just flick it away. Once I have that heat set, then it's time for my second layer. Here I'm going in with a much, much darker red. This is Rockin' Red from Katherine Pooler, and I am using my Amazon blending brush to get that on. I went ahead and again prepped my surface, and I'm doing my final stamping. Now on this layer, I want to fill in all of those extra spaces that are on the paper and overlap some of those flowers. Then for this final layer, I'm sprinkling on some Valentine embossing powder from Imagine. This is a red embossing powder with some glitter. But you can already see on my panel where I've added that ink, the glitter embossing powder is not as much of a resist as just your plain clear embossing powder. So keep that in mind whenever you choose your embossing powders that you want to use for this technique. I went ahead and heat set that red glitter, then use my dry paintbrush to dust away any leftover ink that was on top of the panel. And then I was left with this gorgeous panel. I love the way this one turned out. It's more of a distressed look, but it's still gorgeous. So what I decided to do with this one was cut it in half and use both pieces on two separate cards. I cut it at an angle, added a little bit of maroon cardstock to those angles just to offset it from the card base. On the card base, I stamped the big happy birthday and then on the other one, I stamped the large thank you, both in black ink. And both of these cards are on A2 top folding card bases. 
But there you have it, ink trapping. It's super easy. You only need a few supplies to do it. And you can even skip that top layer of embossing and just fill in with more of your ink trapping on your first two layers. I love the way these cards turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed a look at this technique. If you want to subscribe to my channel, be sure to do that now. Don't forget all the information and the supply list down in the description box below. Thanks for watching and happy crafting, everyone.